Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News, and I'm joined by the GWOAT herself, Clarissa Shields. Clarissa, how are you doing today, mate? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Thought we'd jump straight into it. So, huge fight with Hannah Gabriels, the rematch, June 3, live on the zone. How are you feeling about the fight? I feel really good, honestly. Like, after coming off a huge win with the Battle Marshall, I feel like I've learned so much from, from that fight. And um, I'm just ready to use what I learned in my next fight and just improve and just get better. And it's, and I'm against a very tough opponent, you know. Um, she did something that no other woman fighter has been able to do, and that's knock me down. And I guess that's a huge feat when it when it comes to me. So uh, I'm just ready to show her that she can't knock me down again, and I'll be the one getting the knockdowns and the knockouts this fight. Definitely, kind of obviously, as you said, that it's a it's a major part. Obviously, no other fighter has has knocked you down. I don't think any fighter has even gone close to doing that. I've, I've watched the, quite a few of your fights. Um, does that kind of stay in your mind when you're preparing for such a huge rematch? No, you know, I'm a person, and, and I'm glad that I um, learned this so long ago. I'm a person that once. Um, once something happens, I like to leave it behind, you know, um, just forget about it. You know what I mean? Um, what is it? it? It's a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it says, finish, finish each day and be done with it. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. And it's, it's long. It's a finish each day and be done with it. You have done what you could. Some blunders and absurdities have crept in. Forget them as soon as you can. Today is a new day, and you shall begin it with too high a spirit to be encumbered with your own not with your old nonsense. So that's the whole quote there, but it's just the first part. Finish finish each day and be done with it. So that's how that's how I am with uh, sparring, with training. It's like every day I start at zero and try to work my way up close to one hundred percent as I uh, as I can, and that's where I'm at. So I don't think about. Um, the knockdown or any of my past performances, I just try to build and get better and better each day. And as long as I'm doing that, that's that's kind of how I've gotten better each fight. <laughs> Definitely. And I think you've proved, you don't have to prove it to me, but you've proved it to everyone else that you have got better with each fight, stepping up with every single opponent. And I, I mean, I've got your accolades in front of me here, a, a three three time, three way undisputed champion. I mean, if I won those accolades, I'd say it into the mirror every single time before before bed, mate. But also before before um well that fight as well in Detroit, very close to your hometown as well. It must be very special for you to fight back home when, especially when the last two fights were in London. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very important for me. Um, and and I didn't fight small fights or take little pick me fights. I fought some very uh very tough fights in the UK. And I represented America um, like I always do. And now to be able to get my just due back at home, you know, so uh, so close to home is great. You know, I'm going to be fighting in front of 15,000 fans. And this is unheard of in women's boxing, especially for African-American women to be doing it here, he, uh, you know, here in the States. Um, I'm just happy that it's me. You know what I'm saying? That they uh, chose me to fight at Little Caesars Arena where there's never even been a boxing match, um, to bring boxing back to Detroit. Like, I am adding on to that legacy of Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard and Joe Lewis when they used to fight back in Detroit. So I'm I'm so I'm so happy that not only am I the GOAT, but me being from Flint, that now I'm bringing boxing back to where the best boxers are from, Michigan. <laughs> Definitely, you're you're continuing your your his already historic legacy, um, Clarissa. And I was in the arena that night um, against Savannah Marshall, and I mean the fight was great, but your ring walk was that was something special. That was something special as well. Honestly, I think my dad was watching at home as well. He was texting me saying how good it was. But no, I mean what a special night that was in at the O2 as well. I am a performer. That's I, and I'm an entertainer. So. Um... I didn't know that I would be dancing out to my fight with Savannah Marshall till two days before the fight. Wow. And um, I always come out doing a little dance or something, though. But I didn't know that I would have something, you know, choreographed or whatever. I didn't know that um, I had the idea. I reached out to Anthony Joshua. He provided the dancers. 
and they met me at the hotel. We rehearsed the day before the weigh-in. And then I was like, okay, we're going to do this fight night. <laughs> wow, that, so, that is so incredible. Shout out to AJ. Shout out to AJ for, you know, because uh, soon as I hit him up, he like, I got the perfect people for you. <laughs> he asked me, you know, what kind of girl would you like? I'm like, I would like a light-skinned girl and maybe a white girl, whatever you got. And he just was like, I got you. So he did his stuff. They got with me. And it was just so simple to get done. And it just added to my performance. And I'm just happy that um, he saw the vision. And he was able to help me in that way. So shout out to AJ. For sure. Shout out to AJ every, every single time. And also, I would like to go back before we get into uh, the rest of the female fighters around your weight division, Chris. I do want to touch upon um, your amateur achievements as well, or maybe the, your Olympic achievements as well. And I know that you you won your, your first Olympic gold medal young, but I didn't realise how young it actually was. At 17 years old, you won your first Olympic yeah. gold And then you won the second Olympic gold four years after that. 21, yeah. 21. How do you, how do you reflect on those achievements? Obviously, I know you said beginning, kind of, you go through, you live each day as it comes, each achievement as it comes, but those two achievements at such a young age, that is very, very special, isn't it? It's very, it's very, very special. Um, still special to me this day. I'm the only American to ever win two Olympic gold medals. Um, it's only one other girl in the world that has two Olympic gold medals, which is uh, Nicola Adams from the UK. But um, she still hasn't achieved as much as me, nowhere near. Mm-hmm. So um, winning my first Olympic gold was very huge for me because I was just coming off my first loss, and that was two what everybody know, Savannah Marshall. But like I was telling them back then, I didn't lose to her back then. I have never felt that I lost to her. And, you know, it was politics that won her the fight. But, you know, God worked in mysterious ways because um, her winning that fight led to us having our mega fight 10 years later to where I became undisputed champ again for the third time. Um, And then when we talk about like my second Olympics, um, I, I had this quote in my phone and it was by Muhammad Ali and he was like everything he said impossible is just a word that people created to make you doubt yourself he like nothing is impossible he like you take that I am off it's possible e- everything is possible so leading us to my second Olympics um, you know we had coach Billy from, uh, from Ireland and he was saying that you know Clarissa you went in your second Olympic gold medal is going to be harder than winning your first Olympic gold medal. Now, I didn't like that he said that because I was 17, my first Olympic gold medal. I was 5'8 in height. I wasn't I wasn't that strong. I wasn't that experienced. And um, I hadn't won the world championships yet. So now leading into the second Olympics, I, I did win the world championships twice, 2014, 2016. Um, I got best fighter of the uh, of the whole tournament both both times. So now leading up to, um, I was already number one in the world going into my second Olympics. So now that I'm turning 21, I'm stronger, I'm faster, I got better IQ, and I'm number one in the world. I just told him that, you know, it's all about wh- you know what you speak and what you believe, and I believe that when like my second Olympics will be easier than the first. And he didn't like that. But I had told him that's the mindset that we're going to have if you're going to be in my corner and we're going to work together because I believe that none of these girls can beat me, not even on my worst day. Okay, I can be sick with the flu. I'm still going to win. Okay, so uh, he understood that. He jumped right on board. And I had Coach K with me also, a coach, a Coach K Karoma. And it just made everything so much easier. But winning those Olympic gold medals will forever be. To me, my biggest and best achievements, you know, because it was something that people said that I wouldn't do. You know, they were saying that I wouldn't even get a bronze medal for my first Olympics, even though I was great and I was, you know, a good female fighter at the time. But I knew that I could win gold. People on the USA team that were on, who were my teammates doubted me, you know, and said that they didn't think that I would medal. So to be able to come out as the only American in 2012 to get gold and the only person to do it in America again, 2016, 
even though I had the most supportive team, um, still just is one of those things that it, it's a people get to experience the Olympics once in a lifetime. I got to experience it twice and come out on top twice. I feel very lucky and fortunate. And um, it's nothing better than winning the Olympics. Like, yeah, we got world people, world titles, uh, undisputed championship, but the Olympics was, I almost get emotional time when I'm emotional. Like I don't even hold my gold medals a lot because when I, when I do hold them or I do put them on, it just brings me so much pride and joy to know that I work my ass off mm. to achieve this. And uh, yeah, ain't nobody else in this world like me. So I'm just <laughs> fortunate and blessed, honestly. <laughs> One of those things that I just always laugh about. It. Like, I just cannot believe this shit. I can't believe it. <laughs> Honestly, honestly, like hearing you talk about it, Clarissa, I can hear watching it from the outside. I can see how much it means to you, but obviously listening it firsthand on this interview, honestly, it's some, something else. And where where do you keep those Olympic gold medals, by the way? They're with me. They're, they're, uh, they're in the room. But I am, I am telling you, I am so focused on my future that mm. the only time I may pick them up or hold them or look at them is when like, I need to be reminded of who I am. You know, sometime in this sport, people can make you feel so low and so down and make you feel like you're not nothing. And me being a celebrity, I can't always get help. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't speak about how I'm feeling because there's so many people that's judging me or don't really know what's going on or have their opinions. But being number one in the world, like, I I deal with things too. I deal with depression and I deal with panic attacks and stuff of that nature. And I don't really have nobody who I can just go to and tell these things to. So sometimes it's just me. And sometimes in moments when I feel very, very low and I feel like I'm not nothing or I feel like, you know, nobody cares about me. Nobody loves me. Um, I just have to remind myself of how important I am. So sometimes looking at my belts and looking at my Olympic gold medals remind me that there are millions of people in the world who I've inspired, uh, who love me, who wish well for me, and who need me to keep going, you know? So that's probably the only time that I really pick them up and be like, wow, look all, look at what you've done. And it's so important and it's so huge. But um, I try not to dwell on the past so I can look at the future. I try not to. Perfect. perfect. And uh, Andrew just said, we've got, we've, got, um, we've got to wrap it up. So I want to ask one more question, if that's okay, okay. Carissa. Um, obviously, Franchon Cruz de Zern and Savannah Marshall, two former opponents of yourself. I thought, who better to ask um, than than yourself, this person who's beaten them both? Um, how do you how do you see that fight going for for the undisputed super middleweight titles? Obviously, you fought them both. No better person to ask. What what are you, what's your opinions on the fight? You know, uh, I think. I think this fight is too soon for Savannah Marshall, if I'm being honest. I think that she has been pressured into this fight um, to save her face. You know, me and her fight was very heated. Um, the lead up, okay, the sit down, the press conferences, everything was heated. And she was supposed to come out the victor and with the knockout and, you know, dethroning me. And the fact that she let her whole country down again, I think that now she wants to try to save face and actually do something like still become undefeated champ, but at 168. But she's in for she's in for a rough ride with 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 a franchise cruise. And I can tell you this: franchise is definitely stronger than me. Okay, um, franchise is unorthodox. She's uh, sturdy. She's experienced. Her and Savannah Marshall fought in the amateurs, and Savannah Marshall only beat her by two points. It was 10 points to 12. I've actually seen that fight on film. Um, Savannah Marshall was a different fighter than what she was in the amateurs, for sure. But I just think that right now with the confidence that Franchine has and the lack of confidence that Savannah has, that – it's going to be a rough night for her. And I believe that Franchine will come on as the winner. Now, will Savannah Marshall try? Does she have what it takes to beat Franchine? 
she really has to add a few things, which I'm not going to say because I'm not team Savannah Marshall. But um, I'm going to be in camp with French on and I'm going to give her the secret recipe on how to get the job done. Um, Cause she already has her own game plan, but some things you don't know, unless you've been in there with the person I was in the ring with Savannah Marshall for 10 rounds where I won eight of those rounds. And it's just a few things that I'm going to show French on that will give her the ups in the fight. So I know Savannah Marshall wants to win, but you know, with her lack of confidence, and just her lack of skill, to be honest with you, and her mindset, and also with her and Peter Fury, they're not on the same page right now. When I was watching the press conference, and I and I seen him giving me props, I seen like her stomach and her face kind of just go like, oh, like she she was very upset. And when you, it's hard to train with a with a coach like that, and she blames a uh, Peter Fury for her loss and. No, it wasn't his fault. It was her fault. It was my fault that she didn't win. And I think that her fight against Franchine is very, a very dangerous, tough fight for her. But I know that Franchine has what it has, what it takes in that. Um, I don't know if Savannah Marshall and Peter Fury have different game plans again. And then they don't agree, and then they go into the fight. It's gonna make the fight even even harder for her. Definitely, I think I think it is a, it's a huge huge fight. But I don't know I don't know if Savannah Marshall had any other options. I don't, I don't obviously. Um, obviously, well, obviously no, the, the second no. fight with the second fight with yourself potentially, potentially would would the winner of Marshall has not ever fought any other top fighters. I mean, besides me, I mean, I would love to give her props on her knockouts, but I just can't because look at the girls who she's fought. She fight girls on three days notice, three weeks notice, girls who come from 140, you know, make them come up to 60 or 68. Her and, her and uh, what's that girl name? April have some of the same opponents and April fights at 140. She fights at 168. So I can't really say that, um, you know, Marsha didn't have any other options. She had plenty of options. She got Shadesha Green. She can fight Raquel Miller. She can um, marry uh, Spencer, Franchine, Ellen Cedaros, um, Hannah. Like, she has options. Yeah. She just, um, I have never seen her want to take on the top dogs except me. And that was only because I'm the, I'm the cash cow. And she beat me in the amateurs, you know, so that's, but other than that, I never seen her fight a, fight a top girl. And we're not going to talk about Femke Hermes who came off a shoulder injury and uh, hadn't fought for two years. We're not going to talk about that. No, I, so, so I should have clarified. I've been at um, world, world title opportunities is what I meant. But I, if you want to talk about the world's world level, like Shadesha Green, completely, completely agree. Cause uh, that's a dangerous yeah, thing. Yeah, but as far as in 1668, the only world champions are me. Me and French on Cruz, we go because we hold all the belts. Um, but there were other top contenders she could have fought. Yeah. But as far as the world titles, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We no, only want that got belts. Per perfect. Well, I think that's perfect opportunity to wrap. Clarissa, thank you very much for your time today, and uh, best of luck against Hannah Gabriels. Thank you. Appreciate no you.